So to win a football game, coaches spend a long time developing a plan, call it the game plan. So for that game, you gotta know how you wanna play it, plays it'll work against that opponent, and you spend a long time figuring out what's the best plan. And then you'll get into games, and you'll call a play, you know, maybe a pass play, and the receiver drops the ball, and you're like, oh my gosh. And in the middle of that, you're tempted to think maybe this isn't the right plan. But you gotta stick to the plan. Just because there's a mistake, just because the receiver dropped the ball, doesn't mean you get away from the plan. And then you might score a touchdown off a huge play, off of your game plan. But that doesn't mean you only call that play. You stick to the script that you built all week that you're gonna run for that game because it was a good plan, it's the right plan. You can't change in the middle just because you run into obstacles. You gotta stick with the plan and make sure that you keep calling the plays the way you talked about it and worked on it all week long. Now, if you were to forget everything else we say in these sessions, you won't, but it's just a way of making a point. I beg of you, please never forget this next rule, rule five that we're gonna look at now. It will get you safely through almost any darkness you may ever experience in your spiritual life. And here are the eight words that have blessed men and women now for 500 years. Ignatius says, in time of desolation, never make a change. I'm gonna say it again. You can say it with me if you like. In time of desolation, never make a change. Let's do it once more. In time of desolation, never make a change. And in the next sentence in the rule, Ignatius explains why. When you are in spiritual desolation, never change anything in your spiritual life because those changes are always gonna be suggested by the enemy and they're always gonna be harmful. So for example, uh, let's go back to our man who has the discouraging morning, the difficult lunch conversation. Let's take a young woman, for example, who uh, takes an exam and it doesn't go as well as she'd hoped and then she opens up social media and there's something that kind of hurts uh, when she finds someone else has said about her. All right, we're describing non-spiritual desolation in both cases, but some spiritual desolation comes in. She normally, uh, let's say after supper and before she studies, she normally uh, spends 15 minutes in prayer, the rosary, scripture, evening prayer from the Liturgy of the Hours. And we're back at 10 o'clock with the man at his desk. Neither of them feels any desire to pray. Uh, just no energy for this. What they're going to hear from the enemy in time of spiritual desolation is, you know, uh, why don't you just let your prayer go till later? All right, changes in spiritual desolation, don't ever do that. In time of desolation, never make a change. Let's say the young woman, this has been going on for three days now. She had planned to go to confession at four o'clock on Saturday. Saturday morning comes, she's just feeling no energy for spiritual things, doesn't feel God's closeness. She's in spiritual desolation. And there's the thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just go to confession next week. All right, what does Ignatius say in rule five? In time of spiritual desolation, never change anything you had planned to do in your spiritual life. A uh, young man goes on Wednesday evening to the youth group and loves it, it's fruitful, the relationships, spiritual energy, but the last few days have been difficult, hasn't felt God's closeness, gets to Wednesday afternoon, you know what, maybe I'm just, maybe I just won't go this evening. What does Ignatius say in rule five? In time of spiritual desolation, never make a change and look, there's a reason why the enemy will try to get you to change your spiritual plans in time of spiritual desolation. Because for example, if that young woman does pray those 15 minutes, so that man the 10 minutes with the Bible at 10 o'clock, if the young woman does go to confession at four o'clock, if the young man does go to the group on Wednesday evening, very likely those spiritual actions are going to be the end of the spiritual desolation, which of course the enemy doesn't want. So I'm gonna say it again. In time of spiritual desolation, never change anything you plan to do in your spiritual life. Last summer, a young man gave me a t-shirt and on the front of the t-shirt he had written, stay alive with rule five. I loved it. Rule five will get you safely through almost any darkness you may never ever encounter in the spiritual life. Now the next rule, rule six, is the counterpart to it. 
Rule five tells us the changes we should not make in the spiritual life. You don't change what you'd planned before the desolation started. But there are other changes that are healthy and really helpful. Don't change your proposals, change yourself. Change the way you are reacting to the desolation. And Ignatius gives us four very specific tools that can help us change. Uh, one high school uh, student once said to me, Rule five, I think of as defense. He was a football player. I think of rule five as defense. You don't let the enemy into your territory. But he said, I really love rule six because I think of that like offense. You go right at the enemy. And the four tools, you have them in the rule. I'm just going to name them uh, very briefly here. The first of these is prayer. Prayer of petition, which is very simply this. The woman, young woman sits at her desk in her room after supper, doesn't want to pray, discouraged. The man at 10 o'clock. Can he, can she simply lift up, can they lift up their hearts and say, Jesus, I'm struggling right now. I could make a wrong decision. Help me to be faithful. Be with me. Mary, be close to me. Or a saint that you love. Just ask for help. Is that too obvious to say? Do we think to do that? It's powerful. And I can't tell you as the years of my life have gone on how more and more I see the power of this. Just simply asking God for help in time of spiritual desolation. Meditation. As you sit there at your desk, as you're walking home with the discouragement, as you're, um, you know, just heading from here to there, and you're just, you feel the spiritual desolation, think of Bible verses, for example, that can help you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Have those Bible verses ready at your fingertips. Say them to the Lord. Think of the times in the past when you've been in desolation and God has always gotten you safely through. He'll get you through this one too. This kind of meditation is enormously helpful in time of spiritual desolation. The third thing Ignatius suggests is what he calls much examination. Here are two questions to ask yourself in time of spiritual desolation. What am I feeling? And if you can name it as spiritual desolation, you're already well on the road to overcoming it. This whole confused sense of heaviness now has a name and it's something you can work with. And the second thing is, how did this begin? If you can see that, you know what? Actually, the man says, I was pretty happy this morning. Uh, it's just that difficult experience at work or the young woman, the, the exam that didn't go as well and then the social media and so on. All right, you can't deal with an overwhelming cloud of spiritual desolation. You're likely to succumb to it, but you can deal with a spiritual desolation that began in a specific experience, in this case of non-spiritual desolation, you can make decisions about it. You know what, I need to talk to the professor. You know what, I need to talk to my colleague at work and we'll figure out the problem and go forward with it. The social media hurt, all right, there's something I can look at, there are ways of dealing with it. Things shrink down to manageable size when you take a look at it. And then finally, Ignatius suggests what he calls suitable penance doesn't matter how small it is because the tendency, look, the tendency in time of spiritual desolation is this is miserable and you go on Netflix or you go on YouTube or you go on social media and you're not even happy doing it. You're surfing from this to that. It doesn't solve anything. It even makes things a little darker uh, too often. So instead of just giving into these things, stand your ground with suitable acts of penance, Ignatius says. As simple as smile at the last person you want to smile at. You know that email you should have answered two weeks ago? Do it right now. Here's a person who needs a service. service. Get out of your room and go and help that person. Suitable penance is enormously helpful. So four things to go right at the desolation. Prayer of petition, meditation, examination, and suitable penance. And you're well on your way to freedom from spiritual desolation.